Today, I'm going to teach you how to use a $25 tool that can save you thousands in RV repairs. Hi everyone, it's Deb from Deb's RV Services and welcome to today's video. I've been wanting to share this tool with you for a while and it's one of my favorite tools, probably the best tool for me to have as an inspector and a tech. It is the multimeter. And I put on the thumbnail that it was a $25 tool, but that's because you can purchase it for as low as $25. You can even purchase it lower. You can get a Harbor Freight model. I think they're close to $10. So you can you can range from $10 all the way up to $200 with these. Now I have the Klein. Mine is a Klein CL390. And I and I this works great for me. And I would recommend that you could get something like this, or you could get one of the cheaper ones that, like I said, are $25. It will give you the settings that you need so that you can use this in your RV to help test things. So today I'm going to teach you how to use the multimeter settings of AC voltage, DC voltage, continuity, and amps. I'm going to give you four different scenarios that you can relate to that could happen in your RV where you use these settings. So it can save you thousands of dollars on hiring an RV technician to come out just to, just to perform these simple tests that you can do on your own and hopefully solve the problem. So the first scenario, you're in your RV and none of your lights will work. That is an indicator that there's something going on and it could possibly be your batteries. So what you want to do is you want to make sure that your battery has proper voltage. Now you could check a control panel in your RV but I would also make sure by actually going to the battery themselves and checking it using a multimeter. So I'm gonna teach you how to do that. So you're gonna take your multimeter and you are going to turn it on and you are gonna set it to volts. Volts is the one with the V. And then what it, mine does is it automatically goes to AC voltage. I need to hit the select button and change it to DC voltage. Once I have that selected, I'm going to go to the battery and I am going to put the positive lead, which is the red, on the positive terminal of the battery. I'm going to put the negative lead, which is the black, and I'm going to put that on the negative terminal of the battery. I should see something around 12.5 volts, anywhere between 12.5 and 12.8, 12.8, perfect. But 12.5 is still good. It means you have a good working battery. If you are seeing something below 12 volts and the battery, it it could be like 11.9, it could go down to 10, it could go down to 8. I've seen batteries really low, like where there's nothing. Um, you're not going to have enough voltage, DC voltage in that battery to run the lights or to do things like ignite your water heater or ignite your furnace. It all requires 12 volts. So if you're seeing something below 12, I would say it's a good indicator that your batteries are not optimal and they're not working correctly. So what you need to do is charge those batteries. You need to figure out a way to charge the batteries, whether you have a travel trailer or a motorhome. Motorhome's easy. You can start the engine if you have DC to DC charger. You can start the generator um, or you could go hook up to shore power. Travel trailer, same thing, you could hook up to shore power, you could hook up your truck to it, and you could start the engine, and if that has a DC to DC charger, you can get those batteries charged up. If the battery is not holding a charge, even after you charge it up, you go and test it after it's been running, and you see that it shows 12.5, then it goes 12.4, 3, 2, 1, and it's just, it means it's not holding the charge. It means your batteries need to be replaced. You also want to make sure that you have proper water level in your batteries so that, that you have that that can affect your battery batteries holding a charge. So if you have regular lead acid batteries, you need to make sure that it has the proper water levels, which is distilled water only. And I have other videos that talk about batteries and that you can check out and that that can give you more information about how to care for batteries and the maintenance. But in general, those are things that you can look at before you replace your batteries. Make sure that they, you can't just charge them up and they'll hold a charge and then make sure that you have the proper water levels. Your second scenario, you are trying to run something off of your outlet in your RV and it's not working. So before you call your tech to come out and fix the problem, why don't you pull out that multimeter and check and make sure that you have proper voltage. So what you're going to do is you're going to grab the multimeter and you are going to set it to the V for volts. This time, you are going to leave it on the AC setting. So if you have a different type of 
multimeter where you have to actually pick which setting, you're going to pick AC. So you're going to take the positive lead and the negative lead, and you're going to put it directly into the outlet. And you should look on your multimeter and see something around 120 volts. It might be 117, 118, but something around 120 volts. If you don't see that, then you know you have a problem. You might want to check a circuit breaker and see if they're off and, and you could toggle that up and down. So you open up your circuit breaker panel and you check that. But at least you'll know that you don't have voltage or maybe you have low voltage or you do have voltage and it could be something wrong with the device itself or a different issue. But you want to know this information before you contact your tech so that you can help save time and money if it's an issue that you could just correct easily on your own. Scenario number three, you want to go on a trip and you want to check out to make sure that your emergency brakes are working correctly. You can use your multimeter and set it to amps. So on mine, I have two different, different settings. It's 400 amps and 40 amps. Well, we're looking for around 12 amps, so I can set it at the lower setting. And depending on how yours is set up, you're looking for around 12 amps, so you just want to set it to one of the lower settings. You're going to set it to the to the amp setting, and then you are going to take your amp clamp and you're going to put it around the wire of your emergency brake. When you do that, after you do that, you're going to pull the emergency brake out, and that's when you should see the amp draw. So you'll be looking for something around 12 amps. So that can show you that it is working as it should. And you can just plug it back in and take off your amp clamp and you're good to go on your trip. The fourth scenario, you have something that's not working in your RV and you've gone out and you've tested the batteries with your multimeter. The next step is to look at and make sure there's fuses or fuses could be the first step. Either one, they're both good. So something's not working in your RV, fuses are super common and you want to test them out. And there's an easy way that you can test them with a multimeter and before you contact a tech and spend hundreds of dollars for them to come out and just to change a fuse. So what you wanna do is you want to change the setting here to continuity. Continuity looks like a little horseshoe like this. And what you're gonna hear is a sound when you put these leads together, you're gonna to hear that sound. You're gonna keep it on that setting and you're gonna go over to the fuse panel. The fuse panel, you don't even have to pull the fuse out, but on each fuse, there's a little piece of metal on each side of it. Your goal is to put one lead on one side of the fuse and the other lead on the other side of the fuse, and you should hear that beeping sound. It means that you're getting energy through that fuse. You can do this with wires too, so if you wanted to see if there was continuity through a wire, you would put one lead on one end and the other lead on the other end and you would hear the flow of energy by hearing that sound of continuity. So you can go through your fuse panel and you can check each fuse and make sure that they're working correctly. Sometimes they're labeled and they're labeled correctly. Sometimes they're not labeled correctly. So I would make sure that I check all the fuses. If you don't hear that sound, pull the fuse out, look at it. You can look inside of a fuse and see it's the little broken piece of metal and tell that it's been blown. And what you wanna do is you wanna simply change out that fuse. You never want to go higher than the rating of the fuse. So if it's a 10 amp fuse, you wanna replace it with a 10 amp fuse. Remember, there's different sizes of fuses too. Make sure you get the exact size and the exact amperage and you replace that fuse and you'll be good to go. Thank you for watching today's video. I hope that you learned a lot on how to use a multimeter. Again, we went over AC voltage, DC voltage, amps, and continuity. I gave you four different scenarios that you can apply and you can practice in your RV. That way, if something goes wrong, you can test your systems on your own, save thousands of dollars so that you don't have to hire an RV technician every time you get a, one little blown fuse or your batteries are dead or other things like that. You can use this in other ways. So keep practicing and be prepared to get out there.